Another interview, huh? I'm going to be on the Hal Kenton TV program. Really? Oh, don't wish me luck. I won't. <laughs> Say, where did you get that superstition anyway? Well, everybody in Hollywood knows about it. Hal Kenton, huh? I'm working a split shift. I'll be able to watch from here. Now, come on and eat. What's that? He thinks it's a hick. Yeah, a hick. I just wanted something light to feed the butterflies. I'm not really hungry. I'm good. Hit me. Hit me! Sure. What'll it be? Do you have a menu? Sure. Well? What'll it be? Uh... Donut and coffee, please. You forgot the tax. Huh? A penny for the governor. Oh, I didn't know about the tax. <laughs> Go on, keep it. Who needs freeways? <laughs> She's a little confused. I think it's the gasoline tax that goes to the freeways. <laughs> I think. Oh? Uh, could you do me a favor? I can't eat this and we'll march. She raises a fuss if I don't. She hates to see anything go to waste. And especially since it's already paid for. Honest, I just can't. Well. Thanks. Well, now, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. Oh, you just keep your laundry in there, huh? Oh, no. That's a guitar, right? I read somewhere how many thousands of kids come to Hollywood each year, but I forgot the exact number. Well, I don't expect it to be a breeze right off the bat. That's good. What's your edge? Hmm? Well, to get anywhere in show business, you have to have a gimmick or you have to know somebody. I've got a letter from the manager of the radio station at Spearfish. That's where I used to play and sing. Spearfish? Spearfish. Spearfish. Spearfish? Spearfish. Spearfish. Where's that? In South Dakota. Oh, who's the letter to? Nobody in particular. Do you want to see it? To whom it may concern? Forget it. That isn't going to help. You can listen to her. She knows what she's talking about. Hey, are you in show business? She sure is. Really? Maybe I haven't heard of you. Hardly. I'm still trying to get my foot in the door, and I was born here. Gee, if a pretty girl like you... Well, I mean, if you can't... Oh, <laughs> thank you. But this is the year for boy singers, especially with a guitar. That's the gimmick for it. Do you really think so? Sure. Say, how would you like to get started on your career right now? You mean you're singing right here? <laughs> Hardly. I'm on my way to the Hal Kenton TV program. How would you like to come along? That's swell. I can show Mr. Kenton my letter. <laughs> He'd be tickled to death. Come on, let's go. can't take that with you. That would put the tourist take on you for sure. Say, Marge, could he, uh... Sure. Thanks. I'll pick it up later. Well, come to think of it, I don't even know your name. I'm Bud. Bud Eagle. Spelled just like the bird. An Indian name, huh? Was way back. I'm Vicki Wills. The cops! <laughs> I 
I just love kids. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Vicky Will. You don't have time to get sick, boy. You run after this next commercial. I'm sorry. I, I feel sick. I, I feel... I feel terrible. But look, wait! You are terrific! Oh, I was a little nervous. Help! 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 We're in trouble. Now what? Our next spot ran out on us. What? He was scared to death. I couldn't stop him, Hal. Well, think of something. I'm not going to stand here with egg on my face. Do something. Quick. Get somebody. Who? Mr. Kenton. Not now, kid. Not now. I I've got a singer for you. What? Well, he's right here, and he's very good. Now, wait a minute, honey. Oh, he's come hundreds of miles to be here. Hey, bud, come here. Well, okay, put him on. The devil do we care. We can always go back to unemployment. Well, you all got the message, now go out and buy a closet full. As you all know, this show of ours is a sort of catch-as-catch-can affair with everything up for grabs. Our kids don't even rehearse. They just audition and then go on. Now, tonight we're going to bring you somebody that didn't even audition. As a matter of fact, I don't even know his name. So let's bring him on with a big hand. Come on, kid, you're on. Cut your guitar! Have a nice trip. What's your name, son? My name's Bud Eagle. Well, I see you brought along your own band. Let's fly. <laughs> what are you doing to me? I'm gonna love you, baby. Yes, I will. Cause you opened my eyes and gave me such a thrill. Everybody said I was a rolling kind But I guess you made me change my mind I'm gonna love you, baby, yes I will I found it's true I don't want no one unless that one is you I wanna tell you about all the things you do About those chills you give me through and through Oh, you're so sweet and you're so kind You put a heaven right here in my mind I wanna tell you about all the things you do Sharp kids
it's true I don't want no one Unless that one is you I'm gonna love you, baby Yes, I will Cause you opened my eyes And gave me such a thrill Everybody said I was the roving kind But I guess you made me change my mind And I'm gonna love you, baby Yes, I will Just a minute, Lou. That's our boy. Get him. Yes, Lou. Hmm. I'm all heart, Lou. You know that. But you were wonderful. You really got a sound. Thanks. Well, I know a girl Mr. McCauley wants to see you in his office. Who? Mr. McCauley! He's the biggest manager in Hollywood. He's discovered a lot of unknowns. Well, what do I do? Tell him you don't want to go? No! Wait for me, will you? Sure, sure, bud. Look, I have other commitments. You promised you'd let me look at the books tonight. Why, Proctor, you know I wouldn't cheat you out of a penny. The books are right here. Come back sometime when I'm not so busy. Yeah, Lou. Mm. Uh, certainly. Here he is. Here. I'm sorry. That was Don Proctor, wasn't it? That was Don Proctor. This is, uh, Mr. McCauley. You can call me Mike. Bud Eagle, isn't it? Yeah. I enjoyed your singing. Maybe you can get someplace. Thank you. Of course, that doesn't mean that you will. It takes a lot of hard work in this business. Oh, I know that. And, uh, I, uh, might be interested in handling you. Gee, really, Mr. McCauley? Uh, of course, I want to point this out to you. It takes a lot of money to put a personality before the public. And I don't want to handle anyone who thinks they know more about this business than I do. You don't have to worry about me, Mr. McCauley. Hmm, I'm already having trouble with you. You don't call me Mike. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Hey, Mike, we need the kid for the sign-off. All right, bud, now you go and take your bow, and after it's all over, come back, and we'll have a talk. Yes, sir. Well, I mean Mike. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Go follow him. See that nobody gets to him. Well, what did he say? You know he's a real nice guy. Well, is he going to take you? I don't know, but he wants to talk to me afterwards. Sounds good. Shh. I was hoping you and I could do something, but I don't have any money. Well, you know you get paid for this show. You do? Yes. I don't know how long it's going to take with Mr. McCauley, but... All right, the finale. Now, both of you together, one at a time, heads up, and smile. Ready? I I'll tell you what. I have to go home first, and that'll give us both time. I'll meet you at the Coffee Cup Cafe, okay? Well, where's that? Where you left your suitcase, silly? All right, now, go, go, go. You mean I'm going to live up here? Well, I can't have you wandering around town all alone, can I? But it's so big. Holy smokes! A swimming pool! A 
swimming pool up here. You don't like it, we'll get another one. I don't know what to say, Mr. McCauley. I mean, Mike, I don't need a place like this. I thought we decided on the way out here that I was supposed to tell you what you needed and what you didn't. Well, I'll try to pay you back. Sure you will. Now, you've got a lot of things to do tomorrow, so you better hit the sack. Your bedroom's right through there to the right. The second door. Steak's got the first. Was this your apartment, Steak? No, no, it's, it's yours, kid. I don't understand. You see, bud, you're not my only client. I've got others. I can't be around all the time. I understand that, but... Well, that's what Steak does. He takes care of things for me, and he takes care of things for you. Anything you want, he get it for you. I see. You know, being a star is serious business. It's going to take a lot of your time. A star? That's right. Now, you get used to the idea. Now, you hit the sack now, huh? Uh, it's early yet, Mike, and I left my suitcase at that restaurant. Well, it's all right. Steak will get it for you. Well, there's somebody there waiting for me. Now, look, kid, let's get something straight right now. When I told you that I do the thinking, that's exactly what I meant. Well, sure, Mike. Don't give me that. You're the one that wants to be a star, not me. When do you want to start working at it? Tomorrow? Next week? Next month? Or right now? Well, it'll only take me an hour. Okay, kid. Do what you want to do. Thanks, Mike. I'll be right back. Not to me, you won't. You can take your guitar with you. Looks like we'll get ourselves another boy. I don't understand, Mike. Well, now that we're quits, let me explain it to you. You think I made a big thing out of picking up that suitcase, don't you? Well, yeah. That's right, I did. An hour more or less isn't important. That's what I said. But it told me something. It told me that you weren't ready to take orders. If I had an interview or an appointment or a recording session, I couldn't be sure that you'd be there. Oh, but I would, Mr. McCauley. Honest. If you thought it was important. No! Who's to say what's important in this business? Now, I like you, bud, or you wouldn't be here. But I can't afford to take less than 100% cooperation. Now, good luck to you, and I hope you make it. Mr. McCauley, would you please give me one more chance? Do you really want it? Yes, sir. No more arguments? No, nothing. Only what you tell me. You got yourself a deal. And you tell that girl of yours, I bet she'll be happy when she sees all those new suits we're going to get for you tomorrow. Oh, well, she's not my girl. Not exactly. Not yet, huh? I just met her. I sure like her. Where is that suitcase? The Coffee Cup Cafe in La Brea. You know what that is, Dave? And tell Vicky, Vicky Wills, that's her name, that, well, that I'm tied up and I can't get away. Get her phone number, will you, so I can call her? Yeah, sure. Now, don't you worry, Steak will take care of everything. You go hit the sack, huh? Yes, sir. Mike. Mike. Good night. Good night. Lose that guitar. It probably got termites. <laughs> you really think this kid's gonna sell, huh? You saw that crowd. They'll eat him up. Got a half a dozen offers before the show went off the air. He's gonna be, he's gonna be tough to handle. He's such a punk. Well, now that's your job. I'm going home. Well, anyways, I guess we got ourselves a real orphan this time, huh? Well, not quite. He's got a kid brother named Ted someplace. Wants to make some dough to keep him in college. Told me about it right now from town. Well, what his brother don't know won't hurt him. You took the words right out of my mouth. 
and cut the girl off. I don't want nobody getting to him. Vicki, are you still here? Honey, I should have been closed ten minutes ago. I'm sorry, March. And you got to get home. I wonder what could have happened to him. Nothing's happened to him. We're closed. Where's Bud? You got a suitcase here? You work for Mike McCauley, don't you? So? Well, I I'm Vicki Wills. I was on the Hal Kenton TV program tonight. So what? Bud Eagle left the theater with you and Mr. McCauley. He was supposed to meet me here afterwards. I don't know anything about that. Now, how about that suitcase? I'm supposed to pick it up. It's here, but I don't know whether to give it to you. Suit yourself. Wait. Um, it's all right. You can give it to him. Uh, did Bud say anything else about me? No. Nothing? Was there supposed to be something? No, I guess not. Here it is. Does he owe you anything? Not me. He said you fed him. She did. Here. What's this for? Kid doesn't want any loose ends. Well, how about that? And he didn't even mention me. I ordered you a steak when I heard you moving around in there. A steak? For breakfast? What else is there? Hey, what's this for? I use that when I go fishing. I fell asleep before you got in last night, Steve. Oh, you didn't say to come right back, so I put the suitcase in your room this morning. What did Vicky say? Did she understand why I didn't make it? She didn't show up herself. She wasn't there. There wasn't anybody there, just some hashlinger. I gave her the ten bucks. What ten dollars? She said you uh, hocked your suitcase with her for that. I did not! Why would she say something like that? Best to stay away from people like that. Who kind of do anything for a fast buck. I guess you're right. I can't understand about Vicky, though. Not even to leave a word or anything. You say, uh, she was on the program too last night? Yeah, she was on before I was. Well, that's simple. Mike signed you and not her. You mean she was jealous? Could be. That's the best thing some of them chicks do. Set him up in there, Pete. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the trades? What? <laughs> I'll save you the trouble. Last night on Hal Kenton's TV show, a star was really born. After a somewhat less than graceful entrance, I want to talk to you about that, bud. Oh, I'm sorry, there was a wire. I caught my foot in a wire. Well, we might keep it in. Might be a good gimmick. After a somewhat less than graceful appearance, Bud Eagle came on like gangbusters. His singing brought the audience to its feet and swamped the switchboard with calls. Four record companies are waiving contracts. Four record companies want me? <laughs> I, I put that in for publicity. This is something I want you to get straight. You don't believe what you read, only what I tell you. Now, we've got an awful lot of work to do, Bud. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. You remember Pete Bailey and the boys, don't you? From last night. Hey, what's going on? Good. We better work up some numbers. 
But if no record company wants me, Mike... Now, I've set a deal today, eight sides with Fairway. Golly, no kidding? Try that on for size. For me? Holy cow. Just a little flash. Oh, gee, thanks, Mike. Yeah, you'll pay for it. All comes out of the profit. Yeah, yeah, that sure, really yeah, sure is. Now, we got to get to work. By the way, I've got an appointment at 11 o'clock to get some suits fitted for you. Oh, yeah? yeah? Here's some new songs. See how you like them. Oh, I've got plenty of songs I wrote myself. They're in my suitcase. Is he for real? <laughs> Go get them. Try them. Oh, I want to make some records. Great. There are no cracks. And you get rid of those attitudes. This kid's no jerk. Yeah, but a songwriter, him? Oh, uh, you're getting paid. And while we're all here, it won't hurt to run them over. Maybe we can use one or two of them. So much the better. Here they are, Pete. How many have you got here? About 20 or 30. It hardly seems enough. Oh, well, I can ride more. Don't take long. No, no, it's all right. Let's, let's look through these 20. Why are you doing that? Mike? Yes, bud? I wrote a letter to my brother Ted last night. Can I mail it someplace around here? Here, I'll take care of it. Oh, thanks, Dave. Promised him I'd let him know right off where I was staying. You know, you tell him everything that happened to you? Sure did. Uh, you ought to be happy about that. Let's try this one. I'm getting to be a big boy now. I'm growing taller every day. You don't love me anymore. Oh. You don't love me anymore. Oh, oh well, somebody else thought you were going in sweet spot, can I get some sweet love? Roll the dollar every day. But my time is getting shorter with you. Oh, my time is getting shorter with you. Nothing like it was before. Oh, nothing like it was before. Oh, oh, oh well, somebody else wants to be my daddy. And I'm on the wall already. Roll the dollar every day. With you. Oh, my time is getting shorter with you. Oh, my time is getting shorter with you. Right, baby. That's how I know that you don't love me anymore. Oh, you don't love me anymore. Oh, 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 Give me the shot, I'm growing taller every day, but my time is getting shorter with you. Oh, my time is getting shorter with you. Just what you told me to tell him. Yeah. Gonna make some records, do some shows. It's gonna be a long time before any money comes. And then I told him to write and care of your office here. Yeah, well, that ought to hold him for a while. But one thing I want you to remember, when you're playing Ted, don't write the same letters on the same typewriter. Oh, why does he have to have a brother for anyway? Now, once you get a hold of Rick, we want to get these pressings all over the country yesterday. Oh, by the way, New York called three times. Oh, that'd be Ed on that TV deal. Long distance, please. Circle 23000, New York. Yeah. It's Macaulay speaking. Ed. Yeah. Bud Eagle? For $500? Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, 
You're talking, you're, you're crazy. Five thousand's more like it. He's the hottest thing in the country. I was wondering when you'd be coming in. Oh? Give a listen. What is it? What do we have a devotion? Yeah, good, good idea. Uh, hey, Weasel, what's a devotion? You know, like in the army, stupid. First infantry diversion, second infantry diversion. You know. Not bad, huh? March, I think he's the most. And he hasn't been around town long enough to get a haircut. I found it's true. I don't want no one. I asked the guy and he said they were putting them in all over town. It's wonderful. You really fell for that guy, didn't you? Just, just like a ton of bricks. I didn't know myself until... Have you heard from him lately? No. I just wondered. You hadn't said. Here. Take this dime and go play the other side. No. I, I think I'll go out and buy the record. This is the shot that goes on the record sleeve. Now, this is the one that I want everybody to plug. So this is what he looks like. Good thing this is no beauty contest. Yeah, you just do your job. What do you think, Karen? I think he's cute. Sure he is. He's got appeal. Hello, Bud. Come on in. Bud, these are the presidents of your fan clubs. Every major high school in Los Angeles is represented here. You can meet them individually later. Right now, we've got a little business to transact. Do you mind? I should say not. Sit down someplace. As I was saying, this kid's got appeal. I think we can go the whole route. Sooners and everything. What about tearing off his clothes? That's for squares. I think it's effective. I agree with Karen. But you check with me first, because suits cost money. Speaking of money, Mike... The usual rates will apply. I've never cheated any of you, have I? <laughs> Cost of living's going up, up, up. Yes, but I'm giving you bigger territories. No, the same rates will apply. $25 a week for every week the sales go over normal in your area, plus the membership fee. What about Fairway products? Can I have anything new? Uh, more about that later. How about a fad? Hmm? What'd you say? What kind of a fad do you want us to start? Oh, this one is a natural. Eagle feathers. Bud Eagle. You get it? You wear them behind your ear, you stick them in your hair, you put them around your wrist. You can wear them on your coat. Where are you going to get eagle feathers, Mike? Oh, turkeys, chickens, magpies. What difference does it make? I want you to get those county schools into the lineup. I want action. We've got to work fast. This kid's first record's got to be a million seller. That'll get the attention nationally that I want. Without payola? Payola, buzz Ola, or just call it Ola. That's my business. Do you know what I heard, Mike? Never mind. I heard that DJs all over the country are stockholders in Fairway products. That was really smart, Mike. Yeah, what about us, Mike? Stockholders. Now, let me tell you punk something. A stockholder is generally a guy that never makes a nickel. Now, you're all on the payroll, and that's top banana in my book.
Hi, kid. You going someplace? Home, maybe. I haven't liked the last couple letters I've been getting from Ted. They don't sound like him at all. Well, now, if that's all that's bugging you, well, we'll invite him and have him come out for a visit. That's not all. Well, everything was all right yesterday. Something must have happened. What's up? Does everything have to be so phony? Oh, bud, sit down. Stay, bring him a Coke. I don't want a Coke. It'll only take ten minutes of your time. You owe that to me, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do. All right, gang, let's see you blast off with some smash success. Action means dollars. You can depend on us, Mike. But can you depend on him? Times aren't that tough. What do you mean, baby? Those clothes. Is that the new tearing off type? Really? Ah, uh, you should have the rags that Bud's got. All right, now let's go, everybody. Bud, you're in a serious business, a big business. You know that, don't you? Yeah. I knew you would. Now, let's analyze this business. We've got a product to sell. You. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, to sell our product, we advertise, we publicize, we promote every angle to increase sales. Okay? Yeah. Now, in the course of this business, we use fan clubs. We supply them with pictures and information. I understand all that, but it's just that... Fan clubs are very important in this business. You know, if people don't like a kind of candy bar, they won't buy it. But you can't make people, force people to like me. You just can't take a group of people and say, you like Bud Eagle, and you go buy his records. You just can't do that, Mike. That's exactly what you do. Life is a big game of follow the leader. Now, those kids that were here this afternoon, these high school kids, think back, you're just out of school. Wasn't there someone in school that everybody admired? Yeah. Who? My brother Ted, he's a captain of the football team. And if he drank his malts down at the local malt shop, pretty soon everybody was drinking them there, right? Oh, yeah. But, well, now, what makes you think that he wasn't getting paid to drink his malts there? Not my brother Ted. That's the way of the world, kid. Get with it. I don't think you're right, Mr. McCauley. And I don't think I have to be a part of it. I admire you for that. If more people thought like you, we wouldn't have so many crooked politicians and payola and brainwashing. Goodbye, Mr. McCauley. Thanks for everything. By everything, you mean all the money I've spent on you, don't you? Well, you got it back, didn't you? I made those records and I did those appearances. And I never saw any of it. Why, it didn't even dent the expenses. Come on down to the office sometime. Take a look at the books. And that guitar that you're taking with you, for instance. Oh, I didn't mean to take that. Just, I'm so used to carrying one that, well, maybe you can sell it. Maybe. But how about all those suits that are hanging in the closet? How much do you suppose I could get on them? I guess I forgot. I'm on the hook for plenty. But that's okay. I mean it. I'd rather lose $50,000 than to see you lose your ideals. Fifty thousand dollars? I told you this is serious business. Steak, get on the phone, call the airline, see if there's not a flight out right away to, uh, Spearfish, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, you have to stop by there sometime, pay your call. Mike? Steak, get on that phone right now. Maybe there's a plane out right away. Mike? Yeah? How long would it take for you to get the money back you spent on me? I told you, kid, don't worry about it. No, how long? Mm -hmm. 
six months, maybe. Uh, less if we really worked. Okay, let's. What do you mean? Well, let's really work and get your money back. You do that for me? I can't leave you in the hole. I'll pull you out and then I'll take off. I just don't know what to say. You don't say anything. Just start lining up those jobs like mad. We're gonna hit this town like a b
I've been wondering what happened to you. But Stake said... Stake said what? Well, I was talking to him and, and he said, like, you didn't even want to see me that night or something. But I told Stake to tell you. He gave me a dollar and said that you didn't want any loose ends. Why would he say something like that? I don't know, but I know you didn't mean it. What do you say we go someplace? Oh, all right. What would you like to do? Anything. Let's just get out of here. Well, maybe bowling or how about skating? Skating? Sure. My uncle runs a rink. I meant someplace where we could be alone. Well, we can be alone there. And besides, the rink is closed and I can get in any time. I have the key. Well... You know how to skate, don't you? Oh, sure. I used to go skating all the time. <laughs> I thought you meant roller skating, not these. Silly, why did you tell me you couldn't skate? Watch this. clubs are demanding it. Well, how much did that cost? Oh, it didn't cost anything. You get it back. Look what I brought you. A midget tape recorder. Isn't that something? I heard a little microphone you put on your lapel. You know, now you can write songs while you're on the move. I've noticed you haven't been writing many songs lately. I've been a little busy. What's the matter with that kid? 
You saw that girl again. What girl? The one he used to tell us about. We can't have that. If he wants a girl, get one for him. How about Daisy? Why not? Pardon the intrusion, but I just had to see if Mike was too cheap to even change the lock. You're Don Proctor, aren't you? That I am. Since I know who you are, we have the basis of a lasting friendship. Can I have a drink? Go ahead. Thanks. Will you join me? No, thanks. Not yet, huh? You will. I don't remember you being up here before. I used to live here. You didn't know that? No, I know you're a singer. I got some of your records back home. Correction. I used to be a singer. In fact, I used to be one of Mike McCauley's trained seals. And therein lies the tale. You care to hear it? Go ahead. It's not a long story, but a very tiring one. A few years ago, the fashion was handsome young men with wavy hair. And now it's kids. You don't even have to understand the words. I'm not knocking you, bud. That's all right. So, anyway, I hooked up with Mike McCauley. Uh, he treated me royally. Moved me in here and he gave me that funny monkey steak as a bodyguard and major domo. I presume. No, I know you're a singer. I got some of your records back home. Correction. I used to be a singer. In fact, I used to be one of Mike McCauley's. Train seals. And therein lies the tale. You care to hear it? Go ahead. It's not a long story, but a very tiring one. A few years ago, the fashion was handsome young men with wavy hair. And now it's kids. You don't even have to understand the words. I'm not knocking you, bud. That's all right. So, anyway, I hooked up with Mike McCauley. Uh, he treated me royally. He moved me in here and he gave me that funny monkey steak as a bodyguard and major domo. I presume that psycho is still with us. Yeah, he is. Naturally. I didn't have to pay for a thing. Did you ever have to pay for anything? No. You know why? Because you can't. You haven't got any money, have you? No, I don't. That's part of the golden leash. Give him everything, but keep him broke so he can't get away. <laughs> Am I boring you? No, go ahead, please. The fashion came to an end. People no longer bought records by handsome young men with wavy hair. Take warning. I guess nothing lasts forever, Don. So, Mike and I decided to go our separate ways. That was the day I got the fast pencil. The what? You never heard of a fast pencil? Oh, Lord, you will. And when your turn comes, Mike will show you a set of books that turns over and plays dead. Every nickel that comes in goes out for expenses. Somewhere along the line, you've, you've signed away all your royalties. I don't 
do I know you're not just saying all this? Because, well... Because I'm a, a drunk, or a has-been, or both. You don't, kid. Yeah, this is uh, Daisy. She's gonna teach you how to swing. Hi. So, this is Buddy Boy. Is this a new tune? Change your mind? Yep. Same old steak. Let's go. Here we go again. On the steps. I'm gonna call the police. Stella! Get back in here! I'm coming, Stanley. I'm coming.
Come here. Come here. What do you want? I've got a deal. Deal? Yeah. Show him, Weasel. Up for the mix, kid. Yeah, we mean business, kid. Big business. What's with you guys? A bunch of kooks or something? Shut up and stick your mitts up in the sky. We're going for a ride. A ride? Yeah, we's kidnapping, you see? You know, that's delightful. But I have conclusion that we ain't got no transportation. No, I ain't got no money for taxis. We better think of something fast. Don't look at me. I don't even have a dime. I got it. What say we walk? Cheat that smart thinking brains. Okay, okay, let's move it. To the shack. To the shack. To the shack. Where's the kid? Why'd you let him get away? Oh, he wouldn't have been any fun anyway. I knew that you and me. Sit over there. Aren't you gonna take off your mask? What do you mean it is off? We done it, Weasel, we done it. We're in the big time. Not yet we ain't. Not till we get the dough. Yeah, but just think, if we get caught, we get life at least. Maybe even the chair. Gee, my old man would be proud of me. Oh, shut up, stupid. Now, let me get this straight now. You guys have kidnapped me, and you're going to hold me for a ransom, right? Now, we have evaluated your worthiness, and we have concluded that you are worth five Gs. Five thousand dollars, huh? Gee, I'm going to buy my me one of the motorboats, one of them kind that cut through the water like... You're going to buy yourself a lump on the head if you don't shut up. Great, you got it figured out yet? A note it takes. A missile to announce our intentions. Written by the very hand of the unfortunate victim. All right, guys. Uh, the fun's over. I know who hired this circus, but I've had enough. Hold it, you. One more step and I'll fill you full of holes. Gee, just like in the moving pictures. Hey, did you ever see it done better? Sit down. Sit down. Oh, what you go and do that for? Oh, poor weasel. Oh. Alas, foiled again. You know, that was a pretty cowardly trick, enroaching on our insipidity like that. What'd he say? Are you guys really supposed to be crooks? You kidnappers? Hey, what kind of crack is that? We shan't dignify that question with a resort. Yeah. Why not? Hey, this could be perfect. He's gonna mow us down like dogs. Look, you guys kidnapped me, so... Okay, I'm kidnapped. You, you mean you want to be kidnapped? That's just what I want. Hey, we got a nut on our hands. Where the tides are march, me thinks there's a scheme in his motifs. Okay, wise guy, how come, huh? How come? There's no scheme, no trick. I just want to be your guest for a while. And if you guys make some money out of this, well, good for you. Hey, you ain't fooling me, wise guy. You know when you're up against some pretty tough boys, and you're scared, right? Let's get down to work. Where's the paper and pencil? Are you gonna write letters now? The ransom note, Dodo. You were gonna write a ransom note, weren't you? Brains? Uh, to be sure, to be sure. A ransom note. Uh, the very thing. Let me see. How can we put this? How about the uh, fork over five Gs or your boy will get killed? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
We can't ask for 5,000. Too much, huh? Two, maybe? If we're gonna do this, let's do it big. Well, how big? Well, I should be worth at least 15,000. Dollars? Why not? Let's go all the way. She, you're big time, all right. Are you sure they're gonna pay? If they'll pay five, they'll pay 15. You know, there's an elephant of truth there. Say, can I have your, your autograph? Hey, what are you, some kind of nut? Okay, so it's 15,000. So what do you put in the letter? How about, put the money in a paper sack and put it in a garbage can behind Marge's cafe. Huh? <laughs> they out of their copy picket mind. Uh, I guess they found out your old heart, Mike. Well, what's so funny about it? I don't know. I guess it's the fact you're going to have to shell out for a change. Oh, a big joke. go on the radio to the whole world. No. Let's go back to the shack. Back to the shack. Paid unequivocally. Well, I'll be. <laughs> okay, gang, now for the payoff. A four-way split, right? Four? Sure, kid. We ain't misers. After all, it was your idea to ask for 15. Right, gang? Right, fair is fair. Thanks, guys, but I don't want any. Oh. But we don't know how to split 15,000 three ways. Stay!
Hello, Marge. You been sick or something? I hadn't seen you around. I haven't felt like getting out lately. Have you heard any news about Bud? No. I wonder what could have happened to him. That was a publicity stunt. I heard a couple of guys talking. A publicity stunt, huh? Just the sort of thing that a stinker would pull. Stinker? You heard me. See this cup? It's a cup. No, look. See how clean it is. Yeah. I got me a new dishwasher. Is it a man? Mm -hmm. He came in the other day. He was hungry. Needed a place to sleep. He's a good worker. Marge, you should be careful. You don't know anything about him. He might steal everything in the place. As a matter of fact, he does act suspicious. I'll get rid of him right now. Hey, you in there! Come on out! You want me, Marge? Come Vicky! Are you all right? Sure, I'm all right. It wasn't very nice of you to involve Marge in your publicity stunt. Oh, this isn't a publicity stunt. No, I'd like to know what you call it, then. Would you? All right. I came here because... Well, I had to have a place to think. Oh, I imagine it would be very difficult to concentrate with that girl hugging and kissing you. Well, if you'd have let me explain it... Why should I? You seem to be enjoying it. That's the way you feel about it. Did you? No. I'm glad. it's a publicity stunt. Mm. I'm surprised, Ed, that an old hand like you fell for that. Yeah. Why, it'll hit every newspaper in the country. Mm. Record sales will go to the top. Hey, how's the weather in Philadelphia? So long, Ed. That's five calls today. I don't know what they're worried about. If that kid don't show up, I'm the one that's going down the drain. They and the penalties and forfeits for all those theaters. I ought to take it out of your hide. Don't worry about it. I got kids looking for him all over town. Well, they better. Paying all those penalties for those theaters. And it cost me $5,000 to square it with Don Proctor. I told you, he fell down the steps. Fell! Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you get in here? The door was open. Well, just close it on your way out. for Mr. Mike McCauley. Hi, McCauley. What do you want? Well, Mr. McCauley, you don't know me, but I need $20. Get lost. All right, you heard him. Let's go. All right. I guess I'll just have to go to the newspapers. Go to the newspapers about what? Bud Eagle. I hate to spoil anybody's pitch, but I really need that $20. What about Bud? Well, I know he's just pretending to hide out for a publicity stunt. I haven't heard you say so on the phone. Yeah, yeah. You know where he is? Sure. Well, where is he? That's my pitch, Mr. McCauley. For $20, I won't tell the newspapers. Uh, give it to him. Thanks. I just want to see whether you had something to sell now. Where's Bud? Oh, he's at the Coffee Cup Cafe on La Brea. He's working as a dishwasher. Well, why didn't you think of that? Of course that's where he is. Where the girl stays. You guys didn't know where he was? On your way, Buster, on your way. If I'd have known that, I could have got more than 20. Hmm. You still can. You can wait a half hour and go to the newspapers. Maybe. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'll accept the part about waiting a half hour. Yeah. Smart kid. You sure are a nice guy, Mr. McCauley. You sure are. 
we're back in business again and bigger than ever. I can just see it now. Boy goes to cafe to see girl. Young love. Publicly eat it up. <laughs> well, we probably have to get that little girl in the act now. Suppose the kid doesn't want to cooperate. Oh, yeah, you'll cooperate. I don't know about that. That girl's got a pretty face, hasn't she? Yeah. Well, he'll cooperate if he wants to keep it pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Go on inside, Mickey. Hello, Mike. I'm a little disappointed. I didn't think you'd run out on me. Well, I didn't like what I heard. Oh, Don Proctor? Oh, he's a drunk. You can't believe a word he says. Then why did Steak jump out of his skin when he saw him? Huh? Oh, I don't know about that, but I thought we agreed that you wouldn't leave me in a hole. Huh? Well, I've added it up, Mike. And we've sold four million records, we've done seven TV shows, and I don't know how many personal appearances. Now, every kid in this country is buying stuff with my picture on it, and I haven't got anything on it except six suits and one new guitar. And I left all those back at the apartment. Are you saying I cheated you? Didn't you? You want to come down to the office and look at the books? No, Mike, not those books. But I'll tell you what I will do. What? Tell me. You can have everything you've got up until now. And we're going to start a new set of books for that tour you got lined up for me. Well, that's all right, but awfully confusing to a bookkeeper. Ah, another thing. New bookkeeper. Uh huh? And I'm going to live by myself, and I'm going to handle my own money. Ah, uh, you smart punk. Who do you think you are? I'm just what you made me, Mr. McCauley. Big enough not to need you anymore. I can get another manager. Yeah, you got pretty smart in a hurry, didn't you? Another thing, uh, no payola and uh, no of those phony fan clubs. You want to be liked just for yourself alone. That's right. How about it, Mike? Is it a deal? You little punk. You sing for me or you sing for nobody and get this straight. I can... That, Mike. Uh, what would all of those nice kids back in your hometown think if they knew what you were really like? Daisy, for instance. I never had anything to do with her. Yeah, but she'll say anything I tell her to say. And the stories that I can spread make mighty good reading back in your hometown. Yeah, your brother can paste them in his scrapbook. Yeah. And the tour starts on Saturday. And you better be there, and you better not have any sore throats or anything. Because there's 12 grand in it for me. If something happens to your voice, something happens to your throat, right? Let me get this straight now, Mike. If I get a new manager, you're going to spread a lot of lies about me. And if I don't sing at all, you're going to try to hurt Vicky. Is that right? Kid, don't you hear good? That's exactly right. Hey, bud, we're out of tape. It's OK. We've got everything. Tape, get him!
Everybody come on out. Bud, are you all right? Sure. I guess you met my brother, Ted. Your brother? Well, what does he want? He told you. But in case you forgot, it's all on the tape. An honest count from now on. Me? I wouldn't keep you around. But Bud thinks he can use you. He says you're smart. It's nice of you to say that, Bud. So they smart. Get out of line once, we put this tape recording on the hit parade. If that's the way you want it, where do we go from here? You gave me a chance. Now it's my turn to give you one. Let's say we get some real teamwork going from now on. <laughs> Don't you think Vicky's great, Mike? <laughs> Don't you think she's gonna be terrific? I got an idea. See one, take one. Well, my baby's sick and I don't know what to do. Yes, my baby's sick and I don't know what to do She's got twist fever and a double case of guitar flu Well, she twists on the highway, twisting in the swimming pool She twists on the highway, twisting in the swimming pool She twists her breakfast, twists right off the school Well, twist on, baby, twist me one time more Yeah, twist on, baby Twist me one time more Well, she can twist in the air And twist right down to the floor She's got Chris fever She's got Chris fever She's got Chris fever Oh, fever Yeah, she's got Chris fever And I just can't leave her alone to a doctor gonna find out what to do yes to a doctor gonna find out what to do well the doctor couldn't fix her cause the doctor is a twister too she's got crispy yeah, she's got crispy she's got crispy yeah, oh, well she's got crispy and i just can't leave 